Most shippers, Kishimoto-san's wife included, have wanted this for ages. A lot of people were pleased when Naruto married Hinata, but not as many as there would have been if Naruto had married Sakura. It's not out of the realm of possibilities for Naruto to have married her instead. There were many times where we were even led to believe that it would happen. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. During the Five Kage Summit arc, after realizing that Sasuke was likely lost beyond redemption, Sakura made a decision. Sasuke would need to die, and she would be the one to kill him. He wasn't coming back, and because of Naruto's Nindo, he would never stop until Sasuke came back or Naruto died. She tried to stop Naruto from continuing by saying she didn't need him to bring Sasuke back because she was in love with Naruto instead. Naruto said he was disgusted and hated people who lie to themselves. But what if this moment had been a little bit different? What if Sakura wasn't lying? And what if Naruto accepted? How would this have changed things? Well, more than likely, nothing would have changed. The main story would likely go the same unless we consider the concept that Sakura hesitated when she went to kill Sasuke. If she hadn't hesitated, would she maybe have succeeded in bringing him down? And how would that have changed things? It would likely affect a lot, especially in that final battle. If we give enough plot armor, we can say that maybe Naruto would find a way through his bonds with everyone else to accomplish what he had done before. However, we reach an issue when it comes down to the fight against Kaguya. Without Sasuke, there is no Six Paths Chibaku Tensei. This means that there's no way to beat Kaguya, right? Well, wrong. Kaguya doesn't need any specific type of sealing technique to defeat her. If you have the right technique or item, you could accomplish the same end with just a little different container. And for this purpose, we'll say that Naruto manages to get a hold on the Benihisago or the Kohaku no Johei. Either works, although the best one is the Kohaku no Johei. If he can manage it, he might be able to seal Kaguya away with one of these two treasured tools and victory could be attained. It would be far closer than before and very unlikely without some sort of plot armor. But let's just say that in some universe this occurs and everything ends. The fourth Shinobi World War comes to a close and Sasuke is dead. I honestly didn't like Sasuke for anything more than his cool eyes, so there's no issue for me. At some point after this, the events of Naruto the Last would occur. Toneri appears on Earth and seeks his wife in Hinata Hyuga. When Hiyashi Hyuga refuses, a fight breaks out and Hiyashi is defeated. Meanwhile, the five Kage hold an emergency meeting to discuss the moon. It's falling out of orbit. Toneri eventually goes after Hinata and takes her to the moon where he attempts to marry her. She offers less resistance to this idea as she now no longer holds out hope for Naruto. She would still offer resistance in hopes of stopping the moon's fall, but would fail once more. He then puts her under mind control to force her to marry him and they both reach the bed where they will sleep in preparation for the Earth's destruction. However, Teneri does not consider that the Raikage has a literal secret weapon to use against him. Using the Chakra Cannon, given that they have no other choice, they fire it, obliterating the moon, killing Teneri, Hinata, and Hanabi in the process. Of course, this is bad for the Earth. I mean, do you know what would happen if there were no moon? The tides would recede, the axis of the Earth would go off course. Temperatures all over the planet stabilize, making weather prediction impossible, and seasons would become fatally extreme. The moon is required for life on Earth to exist in the way it does now. So after destroying it, what is the next step? If they do nothing, then the series ends right then and there on a very sad note. However, they do have a way out of this, and it seems the likely choice to me. Lord Sixth, Kakashi Harake, would pull out an old technique that had been sealed up by the second Hokage, Tobirama Senju. A technique that is quite cruel, unnatural, and previously used as a weapon against Konoha in the recent past the Impure World Reincarnation Jutsu. The reason for this is because there are currently no known holders of the Rinnegan. Due to a balancing of facts, they decide that the best choice is Nagato, as he was the only one who had the Rinnegan at death and had been redeemed from their past. With the power of the Rinnegan, along with the never-ending stamina due to being undead, Nagato would perform a Chibaku Tensei on the most massive of scales, a scale previously done only by the Sage of Six Paths. Due to Nagato's involvement, the moon is restored. Of course, it looks a lot different. It's brand new, but it is a moon, and people get used to it eventually. 
the world balances out, the tides return, and the seasons become more survivable. From here we go into the next era. Sakura and Naruto officially marry and they have two children, a boy and a girl. The boy they name Boruto and the girl they name Sarada. Boruto enters the academy along with Sarada and is a part of Team Konohamaru. Now to let you know right quick, Orochimaru, due to Sasuke's death, was never revived in the 4th Shinobi World War. This means that there is no Mitsuki to join the team. Honestly, I'm not sure who would join in his place, so we'll avoid the answer for now. I don't want to make up a character. I'll let you all make your best guesses in the comments. Secretly, I'm thinking Sumire. Tell me about how your story would end with the next addition to Team 7. Anyway, we enter the Momoshiki arc. It all starts with Boruto and the rest of the team in a mine searching for train robbers. Turns out they're all dead because there are Zetsu here. Now, a lot of things change for two reasons. Number one, Sarada is not an Uchiha, so she does not have the Sharingan. Instead, she's an Uzumaki, and if anything, might be training to get the strength of a hundred seal. Number two, Sasuke is dead, so he's not going to be doing much to help against the Zetsu. The deeper they go into the mine, the more they find, suggesting that there is more than just a single Zetsu, there are plenty of them. Sasuke is not here to fight them, so the best I can assume is that Konohamaru pulls his inexperienced students out and sends word to Konoha about what they found. More experienced Jonin, probably led by an elite like Shikamaru, would be sent in to exterminate the Zetsu. Everything in the arc seems to go the same, except that Boruto never trains under Sasuke. And since Himawari does not exist, he is even further unlikely to care about learning the Rasengan. Sarada baits Boruto into joining the Chunin exams, and so Boruto does. But he ends up cheating by using a ninja tool which allows him to use jutsu that aren't his. Now, the arc makes a big deal of turning the concept of cheating into a moral and plot device. Momoshiki's usage of the pills, Boruto cheating at video games, and the ninja tool which allows Boruto to use jutsu he's never learned. But don't let it turn you off of ninja tools. They might not be Boruto's power, but when not used under false circumstances like Boruto had been doing, which technically is classified as cheating due to him possessing an unfair advantage over others, the tool can still be used for good. Moving forward, Killer B is attacked and Momoshiki takes some of Gyuki as he had in the arc. Then, during the Chunin exams, Boruto breezes through due to reliance on the ninja tool gauntlet which fills Naruto with pride. But it doesn't last long because in the end, Boruto is exposed and every bit of that pride turns to shame. Then, the Otsutsuki attack. Momoshiki and Kinshiki appear and attack the arena. For real, it feels like we can't ever have a Chunin exam without it getting stopped right in the middle by some sort of invasion. If it's not Orochimaru, then it's the Otsutsuki. After a brawl, they take Naruto hostage and leave. Boruto wakes up in the hospital being treated by his mother, Sakura, and runs off. He throws the ninja tool away out of disgust and rushes home. There he finds Naruto's jacket. He puts it on and does nothing. Sasuke isn't there so he can't come to visit him, and he can't convince the other Kage to take Boruto with them because Sasuke is too dead to talk right now. I do wonder if the Kage would be able to reach Naruto since it was Sasuke who teleported them there, but for the sake of argument, let's say they do make it in time. They would arrive and things would likely go the same as it did before. However, the Kage are defeated and after absorbing Kinshiki, Momoshiki would utterly destroy Naruto due to having the edge. He would then strip Naruto of the Nine Tails and use it as fuel for the Ten Tails they were cultivating. From that time on, Momoshiki would spend a lot of time attempting to capture the other tailed beasts from across the world. Without the Kage, the great ninja villages would be leaderless and in disarray until new leadership is elected. Boruto would know what was going on and would attempt to grow stronger before he could face off against Momoshiki. Boruto would more than likely spend a lot of time with Kakashi who would help him train better. Learning Lightning Blade would eventually teach Boruto how to achieve a Rasengan. During this time, Boruto would have a few skirmishes against Momoshiki attempting to stop him from achieving his ambitions. However, Jigen, the leader of Kara, would reach out to Momoshiki. He would inform them that he would like to forge an alliance and can provide the one thing Momoshiki will need for his ten tails, an Otsutsuki sacrifice. Momoshiki would accept and the two would form a partnership. Jigen, now Ishiki, would finish his transformation. His vessel wasn't strong enough to last, but it was perfect for a sacrifice. And so Ishiki would then throw himself into the ten tails maw and perish, only to transfer over to Kawaki, who he had prepared for the situation. The Ten Tails would revive, and Ishiki would eventually revive within Kawaki and return to his full power. Momoshiki would absorb the Ten Tails and transport it to the outside world, where he would then find the optimal place to plant it. There, Kara would appear to defend them as they still believe in Ishiki as their master. Among those there would be Code, who sticks very close to Ishiki. At this time, the ninja villages would have new Kage, who would each come together for another summit. 
They would discuss what they know about the Otsutsuki clan and the Ten Tails. They know very little about them other than what they had learned from the Fourth Shinobi World War. Koji Kashin would also join this battle as well, as he was specifically created by Amado to kill Otsutsuki. Boruto would have also been training for quite a while, trying to follow in Naruto's footsteps. When the time comes for the final battle, he would head out for a battle along with the rest of the United Shinobi forces. This marks the first and final battle of the Fifth Shinobi World War. If they lose, the entire world falls, as its chakra is devoured by the Tentails. Sakura at this time would actually be the 8th Hokage. Despite how useless, well, she's not useless, we made a video on this earlier, check that out too, links in the upper right corner of the screen, she's still far superior to many others. She's smart, she's strong, and she gives off a real Tsunade vibe, which gives people hope that she will be as good as Lord Fifth. Some of you might be wondering why Kakashi didn't come out of retirement, and the answer is simply that he didn't want to be Hokage again. He didn't even want to be Hokage in the first place, you think he wants to be dragged back into it? As for Tsunade, she feels she's getting too old for this, and was actually the one pushing for Sakura to become the next Hokage. So now Sakura is Hokage, eat your heart out haters. She leads the United Shinobi forces against Kara and the Otsutsuki. Boruto, in very dramatic fashion, shows up late, but he's ready to display his new Sage Mode, which will hopefully give him everything he needs to go up against this threat. The battle would begin and they would fight. Boruto in his Sage Mode would be able to go up against Ishiki and Momoshiki, but he's outnumbered and this means he's at a disadvantage. And this becomes very clear when Ishiki starts using his Hakuna Matata to throw cubes and rods at him. Momoshiki capitalizes on this as well, displaying an incredible amount of teamwork which forces Boruto to realize that he can't do this alone. That is when his sister, Sarada, appears. She reminds Boruto that Naruto wasn't his father alone and that she called him dad too. She would push her pink hair aside and remove her glasses to reveal her own strength of a hundred seal, which would then activate. Brother and sister fight together to avenge their father. Code wishes to aid Ishiki but is instead engaged in battle with Koji, the latter of which kills the former. In the end, the battle begins to wrap up and Boruto pours all the chakra he can from his sage mode into a Rasengan. Sarada would then funnel all of her own chakra, completely draining her strength of 100 seal into the Rasengan as well, creating one of size and proportion that has never before been seen. Boruto and Sarada would drop it down on Ishiki and Momoshiki, eradicating them both and the ten tails behind them. Most of Kara is also destroyed in the blast and those who aren't surrender to the allied shinobi forces, bringing an end to the fifth shinobi world war. From that point, everything grows peaceful. The villages return to peace, the tailed beasts regenerate, and everything goes back to the way it was before. Every once in a while, Boruto will even visit Kurama, and the two will reminisce about Naruto. Boruto would mention how he was never truly grateful to or worthy of his father, saying that he had failed to realize how important his job as Hokage was. Kurama would tell Boruto that his family was the only thing ever on Naruto's mind, and that if he were here now, he would be proud of Boruto. This almost brings Boruto to tears. Kurama then says he is also proud of Boruto, and would happily choose him as his Jinchuriki if he decides to accept him. Boruto would, and together with Kurama, they would honor Naruto's legacy by preserving the future of the village he loved so much. And that's where our little story ends. I went sorta of wild with imagination, but I would like to think that this is how things would go. Of course, this is merely a single point of view for something that can go many ways. I would love to hear your versions of events. Be sure to click the like button if you liked the video, we'd really appreciate it. Also, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the bell for notifications for when we drop more content. Peace out.